Hey guys, happy Thursday. Thank you so much for joining me here tonight. Uh, we are continuing on the June Aurifil block of the month. We are, we're done sewing it, but now we are adding all of the little sashiko stitching on, uh, on the border there. So we got started on that last night and we'll continue that. So thank you for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I'm here every week, a weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, I'm here for about an hour and I work through projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process and stitch and make and sew with me. Uh, so again, tonight we are continuing on the June Orophil block of the month. So Orophil is a thread company and they are putting on a block of the month uh, for this year. And this is June's. And uh, I get to be one of the designers for, for this. So my block is July. So my block will be coming out next month on the 15th of the month. So I hope you guys are around for that and we will sew it together here, uh, just like how we've been sewing all of the blocks. So, all right, let's continue with that stitching. I have the designs drawn on the back. Uh, we made our own little stitch lines and I've been stitching from the back. So the front is actually my back while I stitch, uh, but it's turning out awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm really surprised. It was kind of a difficult transferring process. This fabric does not, is not conducive for transferring a design on very well. So we resorted to like, the most clunky way of transferring a design. I am I am tracing a cap with a sharpie on the back, <laughs> and that is how we're accomplishing accomplishing it tonight. So, all right, thanks again, you guys. Oh, uh, just a reminder: the stitching hedgy is our embroidery of the month this month. It is a drawstring bag with the design pre-printed on there. I think I am going to have a Saturday stitch along for this. So we worked on this last week, but I didn't get done. So I'm going to work on it on Saturday. Uh, I will I will tell you all about it tomorrow too, just because I'll have it more solidified. And uh, keep an eye out for an email about it tomorrow as well. I think we're going to start uh, around 11 a.m. Uh, Central Time. And I'm going to finish stitching it, and then we're going to sew a little liner for it as well. Uh, so I think that is the plan. So a Saturday stitch long. I haven't done one of those in a little while. That'll be fun. So, all right, I'm going to flip you around. Let's get going here. All right, so there is the designer's block. I have it on the iPad here. And all right, let's get to stitching. Alrighty, you guys. So here we are. So gosh, it looks like we're having more focus issues here. So let's let's just um, see if I can fix that really quickly here. Um, all right, let's just. Ugh, it's always going to be just checking. So uh, I don't know. We'll have to see how it goes again tonight. Um, Gosh, if it gets really bad, I'm not sure if we'll be able to do the, the Saturday thing, but I will keep you guys updated. I reset the phone, but I don't know. We'll have to update the app too, I think. All right, so I'm going to grab, well, I have some more thread here. Um, but first, I think I'm going to go ahead and draw the rest of the design on here. So I'm going to just throw s some paper underneath so I don't... You know, I'm going to throw this on too, so I don't mark up my table here. But I'm going to just draw the rest of these circles, because I think I already messed up. Because where circles cross, um, you know, where they cross, I am not stitching in that little gap. But I think I did already stitch in the gap, like here. So, I don't know. That's going to be a little kooky. So, um, already a little mistake, but... Let's just get these other ones. So I'm going to start, I'm going to do the corners. I'll do this side. So again, we are just prepping, prepping the rest of this project, all these circles. So I'm going to do one on either end and then one in the middle. They're all going to go off the edge a little bit, but that's okay. 
that's kind of the look. All right, and then in the middle of those two. So this will start matching up with the one that we have already have stitched up here. I'm just getting this done quick because then this part will be done. But it was stitching a lot faster than I thought it was going to. All right, now we have these middle areas. They're kind of, yeah, like, like this in the middle. So I ended up not using any sort of template on the top just because I didn't, it, it was uh, for the, the Sashiko stitching process, there's a lot of like in and out loading up your stitches on the needle. And that was actually um, was going to be difficult with like a paper stabilizer or something like that. So instead, <laughs> instead I'm, uh, I'm drawing it on the back like this. And if it's a little wonky, that's okay. But you can start to see this kind of orange peel pattern coming out here, looking pretty cute. All right, so just two more sides. Let's just do them all up. Then I don't have to do that later. All right, I'm just gonna get it on the seam allowance here. Get that paper underneath. All right, go right in the middle. So I've been looking at a lot of your blocks over in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group and dang, they are looking so pretty. And um, I love the Sashiko patterns that you guys are putting in, just gorgeous. It really does add a fun texture to this whole thing, doesn't it? Oh, Colleen's asking what brand is my new old sewing machine. So I talked about last night that I kind of acquired another old, at least for the time being, vintage sewing machine. It was my grandma's. My grandpa brought it over and it's straight doesn't work. Like the needle goes in and it's hitting all sorts of things. So something, the timing is off or, or something. Things I don't know about quite yet. Uh, I think it's a singer, but like from the 80s, uh, or I mean the 60s. So I, I haven't done the research on it yet, but I, I will for sure. Uh, I'm curious, curious about its uh, date and all of that. So I will find out, but I, I do think it's a singer. It's, it's like orange, I think. It's got like this kind of taupey orange look to it. <laughs> uh, maybe not the prettiest sewing machine, but it has a history and I like it. Ooh, I'm missing a little, I need a little corner guy here too. There we go. All right, we almost have the second side done. Then we'll, we'll really get cruising on this once all this is drawn on here, I think. <laughs> They're not all even. Uh, this circle's a little lower than this, but who cares? That's part of the fun. So they're all a little different. That's okay. Okay, get this corner. All right, last side. We have the top circle. We've already stitched that one. Um, let's do this middle one. Okay. Gap in the middle here. Okay, so now we gotta get those little side ones. This cap that I'm using, this jar lid, I think turned out to be just right for this, just the right size. All right, now this side. We're figuring it out. It's, it's gonna work. 
Uh, this is definitely an experiment for me, for sure. I have not transferred a design like this uh, before, but I am I am using just a troublesome fabric for for this. Like I it, I couldn't use chalk. I couldn't use anything. Nothing was showing up on the front. So I've had to resort to um, to this drawing on the back. But I actually think it's gonna work. Or it it's it was working last night, and I'm pretty stoked about it. So all right. I think we got all of our pieces on there. So let's uh, let's give this a go now. So we are gonna be working on the back. So you can see how we started right here. All right, yeah, you guys, I'm sorry about the focus tonight. It, it really isn't working, is it? Um, so hopefully you guys aren't getting too dizzy here. I'm gonna do my best to try and troubleshoot this. Um, all right, I'm just looking through your comments quick. Oh, you have your, Robin says she has her grandma's uh, singer machine from the 70s. Oh, sweet, that's nice. Oh, from the 60s or 70s. Yeah, I will, um, maybe I'll show you guys that on Saturday. I'll, we'll bring it over here. But all right, it doesn't look like much on the back, but that's because we're doing small stitches on the back and large stitches on the front. So you can really see a difference on the front here. Uh, so we're kind of going up. Uh, you, we're, we're not doing, even though we drew the circles, I'm stitching them like back and forth like this, even though I am kind of making quite a big leap. This might not be the smartest way of doing it, but um, I'm doing it as the way you would do it if you did this design on a larger piece. So, all right, let's grab a new piece of thread. I have some from last night. I'm using scrap thread. Um, it may be a scrap because there's something wrong with it, like a knot in it, but I think this is looking okay. So I'm gonna just, let's get like two feet, 24 inches or so. I think I have maybe a little bit more. Okay. So I'm using, uh, I'm not using sashiko thread. So sashiko, which is that Japanese uh, embroidery that we're doing, uh, that actually does have a particular thread. Um, I think it's, it's more twisted than the six strand embroidery floss, but it's about the same thickness and stuff. So if you have the six strand, I would just use that. If you have pearl cotton floss, that works too. I'm also using kind of a longer needle. I just happen to have this. There is, again, a Sashiko specific needle um, that apparently has a large eye and, uh, or like a, I mean, a larger eye to fit the thread, but not too large and longer. Maybe not this long. This is a doll making needle, so you can go from like eye to eye or something. Um, but I don't know, we'll see. Oh, that's interesting. Gina says that someone said the focus was caused by the gray fabric. Oh, that'll be interesting. I am I am going to be filming some more stitching tonight um, for a little video that I'm making. So we'll test it without the gray the gray fabric. So where did we leave off? Okay, we started we started coming back around this circle here. So I think that is where I'm going to start. I'm going to just leave an end, and we'll just keep stitching here. So I'm going to. I have to say to myself, like a large stitch and then a little stitch, large, little, large. So I'm just following those lines that we did. So little stitch, large stitch. I want the large stitches on the front. Okay, little and large. Okay, so now we've come where all our lines meet and we want to skip over that. So I'm going to go here, I believe. Okay, so large, little, large, and I think that will get us to where we need to be. So look, we're bunching it all up on the needle, uh, and then we're gonna just grab the fabric and kind of stretch it out. So I'm gonna just leave, leave an end here for now, and I'm gonna just rub my finger over those stitches we just did. Ooh, and there we go. See, we just did this right now. Um, so that's that's working. I think we went to here to there. So that's uh, what we just did. And look, we're, we're starting to form our little circles. So this is working great. Um, all right, so I am going to jump, like how I did last night, to the next area. Normally, you know, this wouldn't go off the end, and I would just continue that circle. 
but I am just going to leap up to the top here. Okay, so big, little big, and then we're going to jump over that area again, that center, and then go big, little big. It's kind of like, um, I still have to say little big in my head, so I can't talk. Uh, it's like, it's like um, machine or hand quilting where you're doing the, uh, oh, am I missing one here? I want to pull it through where you're loading it up on the needle like this. So even this Sharpie, <laughs> I'm having trouble seeing. So that's, that's been the bummer of this whole thing. Oh, you guys, look, I, I don't think I did actually draw my line there. Okay. So I'm not, my eyes aren't just playing tricks on me. I think, I think I skipped a line. So I need the continuation of this circle. Yeah, I didn't draw that. So I'm just going to hand draw it, I think. Oh, maybe it's here. Maybe I just can't see it very well. Circle, 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 circle. How does this look here? Yeah, and it just comes up a little bit. All right, I'm gonna have to kind of wing it, I think. I'm gonna come around here into the seam allowance and then come around this way. Okay, I got it. Let's see if I can see what I'm doing here. Okay, little big little big little big little where am i going about to right here i think right into the seam oh i have it stitched there already so i have um a clue from what's there already little big okay let's go little big and this is where I cross over and get this little part here. Okay, I got it. Big, little big. All right, we got a lot loaded up on the needle again here. So I'm going to just hold the end of the needle and we'll pull the fabric through. I think that's kind of the process is pulling on the fabric here. Ooh, let's get this through. Okay, so Sue's saying that her sashiko needles come in several lengths. Oh, but they are all longer than regular needles. Okay, so they're longer because you want to load up those stitches onto the needle, like what we're doing here. Uh, and then, then we're like debunching. So we're just going to run our finger over it, kind of pull on it and debunch it. <laughs> That's a word, right? Let's peek. Ah, oh my gosh, it's totally making circles. It's pretty awesome. All right, um, we're almost out of thread already, which makes sense. Uh, we're making a lot of stitches here. So, all right, in theory, I got this little bit here yet. That's just like a single stitch. That's gonna be, I might just skip that. There's a little bit right here, but that's gonna be sewn in the quilt. So I'm not gonna worry about that at all. Um, let's start. These, these other little bits, these, um, the start of these like orange peels, I think I'm going to just go, instead of going like the X S shape, like we were, I think I'm going to just go bump, 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 bump. And, um, we'll, we'll work our way back up. I think we'll just do that side and then we'll uh, pick another side to, to do it on. So, all right. I only have a little bit here. So I think. I'm going to actually just jump to this little bit here. And then I might weave in the end and start fresh. Let's try that. Okay, big, little, big. I think that's probably it. All right, I think I can do a few more stitches here. So let's, let's just start up on this right here, this, this, um, uh, orange peel. All right. So I'm just going to jump back over here. So big, little big, little big, little big. And then we're at this kind of center point again, which we're going to cross over. 
oh, you know what? I probably don't have enough floss for this. Let's, let's just go here. There we go. And I'm just going to weave in this end. And um, we'll call it done for this floss. And we'll get some more white floss. So this is all scrap floss I'm using too, which is nice. I like, um, I like being able to use that up. I think we'll just go across twice like that. Let's do that. All right, let's take a peek before we move on. Oh, yep, it's starting. So here are our circles uh, looking good. And I just started two little orange peels. So I'm going to keep continue to bounce those down. So real soon here, we will have at least one edge uh, that has all of the orange peels. I keep calling them orange peels, but it's kind of that design, the circles with all its little moons in there. So yay, I'm loving it. Uh, it's, it's working. Okay, more thread. So this is kind of what I have left of that original thread. Let's just keep going. Oh, and just so you guys know, I am using six strands of floss. I did not split this up. Um, this fabric has such a large weave that this, uh, this is going through um, really easily. All right. Oh, that's true. So uh, there's also... There's also, um, oh, it's Martha. Okay. I'm like, who's a flunger bee? <laughs> and it's Martha. Okay. So Martha, that's right. So there is actually a thimble made for Sashiko as well. And it's a thimble that rests right here because you're weaving in and out like we're doing, and then you're pushing it through because you've loaded up your big needle with tons of stitches, right? And at that point, it might be a little bit more difficult to... Um, pull it through. So that's why there's a um, thimble that you push right there. Uh, so it's a specialty Sashiko thimble. Okay, let's start up here again. We're kind of crossing over that point. And now we're doing our big, little big, little big. All right, and then I'm going to start on this next one. big. We are loading up a lot. We're bending in the fabric and loading it up. I still literally have to say a little big so I don't make all even stitches. I, I need the big stitches to be on the other side. All right, we're going to cross over where they all meet again. All right, and then big, a little big. I think once we get to the end of, oops, that's a, oh yeah, big. When we get to the end of this, I will pull through. There, so see, again, we have all of these stitches loaded up here. This is where I would have a thimble right here, a sashiko thimble, and then push it push it through. But again, I'm lucky that this fabric is actually working really well because uh, it is super loose. All right, pulling our thread through. I'm gonna leave that little end. Oh, I didn't weave in the other end. I'll do that when I get to the other side. So, all right, let's debunch. Just stretching out our fabric again and just peek. Ah, look, so cute. Okay, let's do the next one. All right, big, a little big. It's so silly, but I, I do, I, I really actually do have to think that each time. All right, let's cross over. I'm thinking you just get in the groove of it and you don't have to think it like that anymore. Let's see if I can get another one of these on the needle without switching. It's a long needle, I should be able to go again. Big, although now it's bending all over, but we're gonna do it. Little big. Okay, and now we're crossing over. It's a little hard to see because we're going over this seam, but I think we end right there. So I'm just going to arc up that way. Little big. Little big. Okay, 
I have plenty on here. This is crazy. So let's push it through. Pull on the fabric. And there we go. Just kind of holding it where we were at before. And stretching it through our piece again. This is relaxing. It's kind of fun doing that little stretchy stretch. Oh, there we go. Ooh, it looks like we could pull a little bit on. There we go. Tighten that, that little spot up. But now I gotta do this again. Looks good. Okay. All right, so um, we have this little bit here. And then here's what I think I might do next. This is a little goofy, but I think I'm gonna, I'm just kind of planning my path. I'm gonna go to here and then I'm gonna do this whole arc and then I'm gonna come down at this arc and then I'll be back on my circles coming down this way. So I think, I think that's a good plan. Just like planning my path here, so this last little corner here. Again, it's really difficult to see even this Sharpie on the back here. Okay, I, I think I am gonna pull it through here. Oh, Sue says that Blair Stocker of Wisecraft uh, Handmade got me hooked on Sashiko. It's so meditative. Yes, so she has um, been doing a lot of Sashiko. I think she has a whole Sashiko class. We've done some of her projects here before, so you guys might be familiar with, with Blair. Uh, but definitely check out what she's doing. Okay, I'm just confusing myself. So here we go. We're going to do this next thing. But I could definitely see getting into this a little bit more. I think I think this fabric, except for that it's impossible to transfer, is actually working really well for the stitching. It is so linen-y and, and loose that it's it's working great. All right, here's where I'm gonna cross over. Gosh, this feels weird. I'm gonna pull this through. Like it's arching too much. All right. Again, I'm gonna go up here, then down here, and then that arc, okay. Plan in the path again. Here's where they all connect, so I'm gonna cross over there. I didn't draw this all that great either. But it's working. I like it. I think it's super cute so far. All right. I'm gonna run out of thread again real quick here. All right, now I was gonna come down here and then I was gonna start our circles again. Okay, guy, I got the plan. little big. I'm still seeing the little bigs in my head. All right, now we're jumping over this line. All right, so this circle will actually continue later, but for now, like continue this way, but for now, I'm gonna, I want, I, I just want to see what one side looks like versus like starting those S's on another side. So I'm gonna um, jump back and do, okay, this arc. So there should be actually a little arc here. I'm gonna just kinda add it. I didn't draw it very well. All right, now here's where I jump over. I think we're finally gonna get some of these shapes in here now. All right, I gotta look at where I'm at again. Okay, I think we're good. Um, I'm gonna continue. All right, here's where that circle goes. It goes down to here. Oh, and I still have my end here to weave in. Ends to weave in all over, but I could always do that later. I'm not worried about that small 
big. Okay, cross and over. I'm sure there's a good hand motion that I could get going for this too that I'm sure I haven't um, completely mastered. Or even started to even know about. So, all right. We are getting low on the thread again. Um, gosh, do I even have enough for this next arc and to weave in the end? I think I think just barely. So we'll finish this this arc here and um, weave in this end. Another piece of thread done. The nice thing is you can kind of determine or tell pretty easily how much thread you're going to use. Um, Let's make a bigger stitch there because it's just a running stitch and a running stitch doesn't really use up any floss because it's all just going in the same direction. One more stitch. All right. I think that will be that for that piece of thread. Stretching it out a bit and let's weave in the ends and see what we got so far. Uh, I'll have to get some more thread. Thread from my bin here. So I did see a video where they just went over the last stitch on the good side one more time and that kind of locked in the stitch but I didn't quite get what they were doing so I don't know I think that's the real way to hold down sashiko stitches but we're just doing it we're just doing it the way we know we're just gonna weave in the end a little bit all right let's peek and then I'll maybe weave in these other ends that are kind of hanging out here still ah it's like magic look we got them going on here very cool. So uh, uh, we'll just keep going. Uh, we'll finish these arcs, and then I think we can just start the whole next system of arcs right away off of off of like this curve up here. Um, so same way as how we kind of started these kind of S shapes. Neat. Oh, it really is. Um, it looks cool. I mean, it does look pretty, like not exact which is fine i mean i drew it on with that jar lid but I, i'm liking it i like these big stitches i think it looks super cool all right let's uh i'm gonna go into my little bin here and let's see okay here's some more this is all wrapped up in white here let's see if i can oh gosh this is long my crazy scrap bin but look, I am, I'm starting a new pom-pom. I started just like rolling uh, some old floss from here. When this gets too big, I, I start just making pom-poms out of it. Um, so <laughs> that's why that's sitting in there. Okay, let's just see if we can figure out how to get some white out of here. All right, there we go. Nice good snips worth. Okay. Okay, let's um flip around. Yeah, I agree, Randy. It totally adds just an interesting dimension. Um, oh, you know what? I still didn't weave these in. Oh, well, we'll get them later. Where did we leave off though? Right here. Okay, right there. Yeah, I could see this being a very, very, very relaxing craft to get going on. Like I need another craft, right? <laughs> but at least now I have uh, an understanding of this uh, to some extent. So that's that's what I like. That's what I like about learning all these new things. A lot of times I'm like, okay, I see why people like that. Is it for me or not? I don't know yet, but I, 
I, I get it now, at least. It's like learning a new magic trick. I feel like it's um, just, uh, well, I don't know about learning a new magic trick now that like I'm actively learning man magic tricks, but it, it's like having a new superpower like that. Like that. I like that better. You know, on the deserted desert island where everyone's trying to survive? Who knows? Who knows? This might come in handy, right? Crossing over. We're doing that full circle, or pretty much full circle here now. I'm gonna try and load it all up on the needle. Oh, we're gonna cross over this area soon. Let's do one more. Okay, it's a crossover. And the rest of the shape. Wow, I got a lot on the needle here. It's just trying to bend all over the fabric. Okay, last stitch. There we are. Oh, I went all over. Okay. There we go. There is an actual term for this in Japanese, like this actual act of moving, of debunching. <laughs> there is, there is an actual term for that. Cool. So there's there's one side we got. We have this like one little thing to do, but we'll do that when we, um, when we do like those orange peels for the next side or whatever. So, uh, it's looking good. We got a side down there. All right, let's keep going. Um, all right, I just finished this. You know what? Maybe we do the orange peels first since I'm already kind of on there. Let's do that. Or maybe I should switch to those. S's again. I don't know. Let's do this. I'm going to just keep going around. That's what I'm on right now. Then we can do our little thing where we bounce back and hit the other side. And then we still got our circles to do. So um, we're doing it in like reverse order. Um, reverse order today. There we go. We're almost on a thread already. Sheesh. Hopefully we can get two of these out of here. That's good though that we're running out of thread so fast. That means we're covering a lot of ground really quickly. Okay, jump over. I think we'll do one orange peel at a time and then pull it through. Trying to hold that last position and then de debunch from there. Okay, and we'll get one more, it looks like. Cruising along. Oh, Kathy says the gray fabric is growing on me. I like it more each time you use it, seems to go with everything. So, yeah, it's a little goofy. I mean, that's, that's the hope, right? That it'll kind of tie the whole quilt together because all the colors and all the fabrics of every block on, on mine at least are going to be different, which is a lot. Like that's, that's a lot of stuff going on in a quilt, right? Um, but this gray I'm hoping is going to be the thing that ties it together. So it, it doesn't necessarily look like a perfect match for, for this block. Like it's kind of a weird, if I were to just pick this, I would think it's kind of a weird choice um, of, of fabric for this particular block based on the, the, the circles that we put in the middle. Uh, but since every block will have a little bit of this gray in, I think it's going to work great. But yeah, right now it's in this one, it might be a little goofy. But actually, I think adding this white to it, this white texture, 
uh, of the stitches is really helping. It's toning down how bold the gray is. Ugh, should I try it for one more? Oh, I'm, I'm not going to make it all the way around there. Uh, we'll just go till I can't, though. Yeah, I'm going to just... I'll have to go to about the seam, I think. Yeah, we'll go to the seam, and then I'll have to switch thread again. I'm still in concentration mode to do this. Big, little big. I'm actually spending a lot of energy just trying to see what I'm stitching, because this uh, fabric is not the easiest to see even those Sharpie lines. All right, last one for now. We'll weave in this end. Let's debunch first. Okay. Just enough left here. And I'll weave back the other way yet. I'm just doing two instead of the three. We're going to be quilting this, so as we quilt, all this will get attached down to um, whatever we're doing. But, ah, look, cute little rainbow bits going on there. That's actually cute by itself. Let's see what it's looking like so far. Ugh, it looks freaking cool. All right, uh, we're going to keep going. Uh, let's grab another long piece of thread here. Okay. I'll bring the camera back down yet, but let's thread this. Oh, I still didn't do all those ends, but I don't care. Um, all right, so we were up here somewhere. Okay, yeah, so I'm going to finish that circle. I'll, I'll bring you guys back down here. All right, so we'll finish this circle here. Then we'll jump up, get this, this bloop, and then we'll be coming down back the other way again. So I think that'll work. Okay, shoop, okay, got it. Texas. Okay, there. Now I'm going to come up here. I gotta say it all out loud so I make sure I do the right thing. Okay, this is a crossover spot. All right. All right, now we're coming back around. Now I'm going to come back up here, then here, and then we'll come back down. Okay, I think I got it. You do get this nice rocking motion like how you do in um, uh, hand quilting. Now 
of here. Got it. Now we're coming back down the other side. Good angle here. Okay, here's where it crosses over. Coming down the other side here. Ugh, this is relaxing. I like it. And it's so simple, just this little running stitch. Um, it's just so simple. All right, we're ready to cross over. bunch. All right, we're almost out of thread again. I think it'll get us uh, almost to um, to where where we left off over here. We have these circles to do yet. We're just we're, we did the opposite direction. We're doing like these these half moon ones and then we'll have to go back and do the circles still. over. All right. And I think that's it for that piece of thread. It's just a little harder to weave in the ends when I'm using this large needle here. All right, we'll peek at what this looks like. Maybe I'll, I'll go ahead and weave in all these other ends now quick since we're, we're over here on the back. All these little ends hanging out. We'll go in this area that already has stitches. Oh, there's two here. All right, we got three more of these to do. I just keep not weaving in my first stitches. That's how I end up with all of these loose ends here. Martha's saying, I really like this square. I I am like it too. I mean, there's always a moment that I fall in love with a block and I gotta say, at first I was kind of like, eh, there's kind of a lot in this block. I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna like it as much as other blocks or whatever. But as soon as we were getting this circle done, like this circle coming together, that was really fun. And actually um, cutting out all these butterflies, that was really fun to, um, to do to the, the fussy cutting of the butterfly pieces. That's where it started to be like, ooh, okay, we're doing something fun here. Um, where I got excited about it. 
But yeah, just having all these square, these, um, these, uh, wedges kind of turn into this circle, that was pretty cool. And actually, I, you know, and now I have the chance to learn this Sashiko, and I always get very excited about getting to try a new, new to me skill. So I'm, I'm super stoked. I can definitely, uh, next time we walk into something that needs Sashiko, <laughs> I will be a bit more confident and uh, have a tiny bit of experience with it. So that's, that's exciting. I do like that. All right, there we are. Let's trim that and let's see what we got here. All right. The reveal, let's flip this over. Ooh, pretty. So, all right, we have this whole area pretty much done. Uh, you can kind of see now we got all these uh, half guys going here. We got to still add the the circles in. So uh, I think we're going to end it tonight. I'm going to see if I can solve this focus problem uh, tonight so we're not having to deal with that anymore. But I'm really happy with our progress on here. I, I did not expect to get nearly this far in general on this. So I don't know. Tomorrow I think we could get quite a bit done. Um, maybe not finished, but maybe close so we'll have to see we might uh if i can get this uh my camera working well again i i think i might we might be staying a little late on friday because gosh it'd be awesome to finish this <laughs> but i'm liking it it's looking really fun so all right you guys i'm gonna flip you around all right hello so let's take a look at this again all right it is really adding a lot of fun texture isn't it uh gosh it almost looks like it's printed on the fabric but you get up close and you can see i mean you can see all the hand done stitches you can see all the texture and, and that white is definitely lightening up the whole border and i think um it definitely the white reflects all the white in here so uh i like it it's working it's working and i wasn't quite sure how that was going to turn out so i'm pretty excited about that uh so awesome you guys uh, again i'll be here working on this tomorrow uh if we can get it done that'd be amazing and if i can get the camera and stuff working again it doesn't seem to be doing that on on this side when it's on me so um we'll have to see i'll do some research uh, but then we will on saturday be working on the embroidery of the month again there's only like a week uh, a week left of this, or not even really. Uh, it's coming up fast, July. So uh, you, there are still bundles available if you wanted one of those with the drawstring bag, one of the hedgy, stitch and hedgy bags. So thanks again, guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Good night.